Good morning and welcome back to the Hex Quarters. I'm so hyped to be here. You have no idea how much I've missed it. Look, aside from family, of course, and I hope that this goes without saying forever and ever, forever and never, forever and ever, okay? I, <clears throat> I love the Hex Quarters. It is my favorite place on earth next to family and home and all that stuff. But aside from that, I cannot be anywhere else. I would rather not be anywhere else. This place is it. This place, look, and even, 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 even after, okay, even after Envy came by and left this here, I mean, it's been almost two weeks since they were here. Actually, last week. It's not a big deal. What I'm saying is this, okay, even after everything, I still am super hyped and, and thankful that both of those teams came out, E-United and Envy came out to practice out of the Hex quarters. Ah, oh, it feels so good. I don't even care that it's left, that's a mess. I don't care. Okay, so look, we have to pick up everything. We have to lift up all these wires. We have to figure out a better way to put this together. So much so, so much so that we might have to number these, these tables. Okay, watch this. I got money on the fact that Ian is going to hit me up and ask to borrow one of these, okay? By the end of today. I don't know if he's back, but it, when, when he gets back, he's going to ask to take one of these monitors. Hell no, okay? <laughs> Hell no. Uh, we have a couple of packages here, okay? Uh, we have this one, this one, and this one to open. Right now, I'm trying to figure out if... if uh, if Hypoc and Joe want to, to go there, hold on, let me see if they replied. 17, notifications, verified. Yes, sir. Okay, on my way. OMW, send. Uh, Maddie, you want me to bring you something back? Maddie, you want me to bring you something back? You want me to bring you something back? Yeah, where are you going? What the fuck did I say? No talking in the vlog. Text me. There's massive construction happening next door to me, and it's super, super loud. All right. I told Hypot to order me the same thing. They just got back from Bucharest, so I'm gonna start to get some food. Just finished an incredible breakfast. Was the, the hollandaise was too thick for me to enjoy, but it was still pretty good. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take these gentlemen back to their domicile, and then after that, I think, uh, I think they might stop by later on today, right? Maybe. Yeah, do. You're de you'll, you. You'll, you'll definitely will. Depends on how long All right. It takes me. All right. Um, I wish this. I wish this car was like the X6, where I could just set the camera down right there, and everything would be good. That way, I could have a conversation while looking at that. But you know, obviously, with the state of uh, of, of PUBG and the way that that it's not moving fast enough, I feel I feel the same way about PUBG as I almost feel. How do I frame this the right way? Because I don't want to. I, I have to say this perfectly. I feel bad for everybody in the H1Z1 league because of the of the lack of responsibility that the adults, um, you know, didn't perform. You know, overestimating. The, you cannot force something to become something, unfortunately. Um, and PUBG, I think, is going down the same route a little bit. You, they don't have a pro league. They haven't announced it yet, or at least, or 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 what they're doing with the new pro league. They haven't been announced yet. And that affects the players. It, it affects people that build this scene in a negative way when it shouldn't. You know, if people are dedicating their lives to to work in tandem with a league to make something successful, and only one of those parties is doing the job, in this case, the players, the players are all showing up, the players are doing whatever it is that they can. Some are streaming, some are just, you know, practicing or performing to make sure that they have a good a good showing at a, at a league. You have to let them know sooner 
sooner than later whether or not something's gonna happen there, whether or not there's a future there. For them to pivot or for them to refocus, for them to be able to, to make a, a, an, you know, an educated decision on what their future holds. It is completely irresponsible for people and the powers that be to not let these people, I feel so bad for some players, man, because they dedicate their lives. Some drop out of college, some quit their jobs. It's just not, because that's just not, it's just not a good situation. I think that people forgot that in esports, you as the business or you as the business side of esports have a responsibility to make sure that you put the player first in every single situation. I, can, I, I, I cannot emphasize enough how some parts of the industry are still so, so far behind in, in, in terms of vision, you know? This, this, this culture of esports will thrive and thrive and thrive again if people have a mentality of, of, of let's all grow together and help each other instead of I'm trying to gain an inch right here off of this player or I'm trying to gain an inch here out of a situation. You know, when, when everybody focuses on everybody being successful instead of just, you know, fucking someone essentially, that's when you run into problems. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that that's the case in, in the, you know, in the, in the PUBG league, but we have to be better. We have to be better for the young people, for the youth, God damn it, for the youth. You know, I was just thinking, who's that young man right there? Look at that. Wait a minute. Focus, focus, right there. That, my friends, is dashy, and I wonder if... No, there's no time in the back, but... Uh, he came here to train out of uh, before we had couches, before we had the setup that we have now uh, with the boot camp that we held against or with, not against, with uh, complexity. All right, so obviously we've been gone for a little bit, so we, you know, the packages are piling on. We have a lot of things to unpack. Um, some of the stuff was already unpacked for me, which I'm a little bit upset about, uh, but nonetheless, you'll, you'll understand where it's at. Yeah. My family, okay, my peoples, over at the seventh letter. I just have to make sure that this is the right one. They just sent over, they just sent me a package. God damn it. They sent me a package. Um, seventh letter is a, uh, it's a, it's, a it's, it's like a brand created by, uh, by graffiti artists that belong to the most prestigious of prestigious graffiti crews in the world known as MSK. Um, my brother from another mother, my literal best friend, uh, Omens, is a part of that crew. Uh, that's how I know them. I crew with Omens, with villains. You understand. Anyway, so here it is. I've been waiting for this for a minute now. For a minute now? Hold on, church. So I got two items in here. Okay. Nice. Uh, I got a lighter. Fresh baked, it says. Uh, KK with Trav, nice. Trav MSK, yes. Incredible artist, incredible, incredible artist. Boom. A ceramic, it's, it's a ceramic coffee cup, but it looks more like it's one of those, remember those old school metal cowboy ones that you just put on top of the, on the, of the fire and they just cooked your, cooked. You just made your coffee that way? Well, that's what this is. Uh, that's one. They may have just sent me two, which is cool. I'm going to keep one here, and then I'm going to take one to, to the house. Um, I do like my coffees. Same thing. KK Trap. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I will thoroughly enjoy my cups of coffees out of here. Uh, first class, uh, designed by humans. I usually buy stuff just to support like a streamer or a friend of mine. Oh, ha, ha, ha. this one. I was super, super happy about uh, to support and to buy. Ta-da! It's Dr. Wobblekins. I'm gonna put this on tomorrow. Um, doc Dr. Wobblekins is like this, I don't know, like nine-year-old phenom, 10-year-old phenom uh, that plays uh, Fortnite. He's super, super nasty. He plays with Jack, uh, but I'm his uncle by way of being brothers with Sundance Di Giovanni, who happens to be 
uh, not only the, the, the co-founder of MLG, but also um, the father of Dr. Wobblekins. All right, this one comes from Michael Jarvis, California. All right, we have a letter and stickers, awesome. Uh, Hex knows, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not sure if you're a French cufflink uh, kind of guy, I am. I'm gonna put this on the side and then I'm gonna look at the French cufflinks. Uh, but the answer is yes, short answer yes. What sort of respectable, incredible looking man like, like myself wouldn't wear? Cufflinks. Ooh, my man, thank you. These are uh, spinner reels. That's so cool. Man, thank you so much. This, um, Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, of course. For a second, they look like a tattoo gun, but no, these are uh, spinning reels. Thank you so much. Michael Jarvis, thank you. That's fire. That's, I, I, I thank you. What else do we have here? Don't we have a box or something? Oh no, that's it. We have the stickers. Ooh, okay, I see you. Snowboarder, it's like a, like a graffiti guy wearing a hat the way that I'm wearing headphones and, um, and a gas mask. Obviously the headphones wouldn't be worn outside if it was painting illegally because you need to be, you know, you have to have all your senses ready to go. Uh, cool, awesome. I'm gonna put these stickers up. The, the KK Trav MSK and this on the thing. We've been using the Polaroid camera incorrectly, unfortunately. Um, so I'm using this camera here. This little Polaroid camera, One Step 2 is the name of it, as you guys can see there, One Step 2. And sometimes when we take a picture, it come out too dark, like it does there. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's really dark. Courage, really dark. Uh, Lake Fork Guy, really, really dark. And some of them are really, really bright. Uh, the United one was really dark. I don't know if you guys can see that, really dark. But apparently, uh, my photographer friend, Eric, um, told me that there's an app from which you control everything. And I haven't, because I haven't, which is weird. Anyway, uh, my friend Jason's here. Actually, Jason, you wanna get in the camera and talk a little bit about yeah. about what happened? I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of background. So Jason's here visiting, he's, uh, he, he's about to move to, to LA to go do some stuff. Um, but obviously, there's, there's two sides to every story. Uh, and when the, when the Optic India team where one of the guys in the Optic India team cheated, uh, a lot of the stuff was sort of put on you. And uh, yeah. and I'm sorry that I've taken this long to put you on camera to sort of clear the air a little bit because it's uh, it's bad. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not good for you at least. So, um, you know, if, if you watch the video, you can immediately tell that, obviously he didn't fucking know, because he did. <laughs> play, play that, uh, play that, that, that clip, Matty. Okay, so so let's uh, let's start from the beginning. You, the expansion of Optic India. Yeah. Okay, let's start there because when I heard about it, I was like, it makes sense, but not right now in my in my head. You know, obviously being in my studio, not over there. I was yeah. like, I was good idea, uh, expansion, global expansion, and all that. Obviously, it makes sense uh, for anything, uh, but it, like anything else, you have to do it at the right time, the right way uh, to that. So. Um, I was supposed to meet you out in India for, for this tournament, and then I invited Tom Syndicate to come uh, to, to meet us down there. But tell me, tell me a little bit of, of the decision that went into expanding into India, and then what you were assigned to do, and then finally yeah. we'll end in the, in the thing. Yeah, so um, initially, like off the bat, there was a idea to create this global presence in terms of looking into re uh, emerging uh, countries when it comes to esports. Yes. And, um, you know, obviously Europe, NA are very dominant already. Um, most of uh, Eastern Asia is pretty pretty dominant already. I mean, China, Korea, Japan, they've been in it just as long as anybody else. Yeah. But there's opportunities in Southeast Asia, there were opportunities in India, Africa, and um, you know, South America as well, because there's never been really that much support for people there. So yeah. we figured, yeah, sure, why not? Let's, uh, let's, well, it wasn't really up to me. This was up to uh, the, the organization at the time. And they were just like, hey, yeah, look, we're looking to go and do this. Uh, we need someone to come help us with it. And 
I've worked with other startups that help open companies in other countries, so I was like, look. Okay, cool, this so, is easy. so you've been in my vlog before, yeah, uh, several times. Uh, with PUBG, with Dota. PUBG and Dota, yeah. yeah. So you've been in my vlog several times, uh, but tell us, tell us who you are, yeah, um, yeah. and then what, what your job was at, at Infinite. I, I mean, I had too many jobs, to be very honest. Uh, at the time, uh, initially when the office, it was even before the offices opened out here in Dallas, uh, I was helping out with day-to-day -day things from you know, admin to looking for new teams to setting up and working on contracts and also worked on uh, different things with the Overwatch League and uh, League of Legends as well. Throughout my time over there, I wore several different hats and I worked with so many different teams and it was an amazing experience. But at the same time, you know, I felt like I could still do more and there were too many people in there. So um, my job became smaller and smaller as time went on. Um, but yeah, I think the, the my favorite part being there as well was, you know, working and finding the Dota team, working on um, the applications for the Overwatch League, uh, applications for League of Legends, finding players. I think that was something that I thrived in and I found a lot of passion in as well. And I think it made sense for them to say that, hey, look, since you did it here for us locally, and I actually am from Singapore and I have an Indian uh, citizenship as well and a US citizenship, they're like, hey, why don't you go and travel for us and go find some teams and players? Yeah. So um, I basically got on board with them when they started this whole thing. They already set up, um, a, a trial process that mm -hmm. they were going to do, you know, basically a uh, theory test, they were going to do a LAN tryout, and I just had to go and represent the organization because this was like right at the beginning when they brought me into international um, after Dota, PUBG, etc, etc. Uh, I worked with CSGO as well too. So you, you, you come from a Dota background, that's your favorite eSport? Is uh, that right? I actually have been playing CSGO for almost 18 years. Uh, I played Dota when, before it was uh, even called Dota 2 at the time, it was Dota 1 and then Warcraft 3 before that. Mm -hmm. So you do have a background in esports. Uh, I have been going in, so I was born and raised in Singapore and every day after school or on the weekends we would cycle to the land cafes and it would be like 50 cents for an hour and that was it. We were there spending all of our afternoons, all of our weekends and we were just playing games. Yeah. That's how I grew up. So. Cool, I just want to make sure, because it's important to, for people to know that you do have a background in esports yeah. and, yeah, no, and, and that because there's, yeah. you know my, my thoughts on that. Um, all right, so. Fast forward, uh, I, I don't go to India. Instead, uh, Ro Roman steps up and he goes yeah. in, in, in my stead. So we didn't go, and I actually invited Tom Syndicate to come with, and he agreed, and we were, were gonna go together, but because of how busy I got, I told him, you know, let's, let's push it for another time. Anyway, so, so Infinite hires a company to run a tournament for us to... To, uh, to pick up players, basically. Okay. Um, they, they basically said that, hey, look, these guys have been in the esports space in India for a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. They knew all the players out there. They mm -hmm. knew all the, the different talents that are available from every single level, from you know tier C to tier A, yeah. whatever tier A is in India. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what we did was we had a open try it online where you basically said, look, you know, this is my information. These are my statistics. Everything's obviously public knowledge, right? So um, they had about... 1,400 to 1,500 people apply, and we ended up with about, I would say, 140 to 160 people left yeah. for the land tryout, which I flew out for. Yep. And it was a two-day land, and basically we ended up with about 10 players shortlisted that we wanted to look through. Um, you know, there was three or four of them that, you know, respectively said they wanted to stay with their teams. They wanted yeah. to come see if they could get into an Optic Gaming, right? Yeah. Anyone hears Optic Gaming, every Tom, Dick, and Harry's like, all right, how do I get involved, right? Yeah. So the hype was awesome. People were really in, like interested in getting involved, but- So how many people yeah. apply total? Uh, about 1,500, almost 1,500. 1,500 players yeah. to try out to be a part. You know what, uh, uh, they, they missed an opportunity there. You know, again, not only did we, exp in my opinion, it was too soon, but you know what I would have done? I would have sent a, a, a I would have hired a camera person there and then I would have documented every single second of that of the tryout process yeah. because that's how you develop a, a connection with with, uh, with with the green wall, right? You don't just put somebody in front of the green wall and expect magic to, yeah, to happen, yeah. right? Like there, there needs to be some sort of introduction because we've developed this sort of familiar or familiarity uh, and, and, and community. So I, I thought that was a, a huge opportunity that we didn't take advantage of because who cares? Okay, if we, we, we hire, we, we contract CSGO players and call it Optic India just like that, magically there's gonna be that? Like, no, <laughs> you, need to, you need to create a storyline around that. There was no part of that in vision, there was no part of that. Anyway, I'm not gonna sit here and complain about, about what was not done the right way, okay? Yeah. All right, so we picked the five? 
Uh, yeah, in about a week and a half, two weeks, you know, we, we kind of went through the process of looking into players, talking to them, find out you know, what they want in their futures and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, uh, and yeah, we, we came up to about six players and then, you know, at one by one, we were like, all right, we always had envisioned that we would bring AEU coach in because, you know, Europe has always been very dominant when it comes to CSGO and, and, and back in, you know, 1.6 days as well, right? Yeah. So we were just like, all right, you know, there's a couple of kids who have played in India before and have played in Europe and have, you know, coached, built teams and have actually, you know, done some good stuff together. And then we ended up finalizing with Lucas. Um, YB, who's a fantastic player, he's of a course. great coach. Yeah, the guy is so meticulous in what he does. I mean, anybody can see, you know, what he was able to do with the players that we had, and it, it was something special for sure. Yes, yes, hundred percent. Personally, I would have kept it all in the same region. I would have used yeah. the coach. I would have kept it all one hundred percent India team. Yeah. Now, again, Lucas, uh, nothing but respect and admiration for for the work that he's yeah. done. You, you yeah. can he could probably turn me into a pro, uh, <laughs> but. Again, I wouldn't have gone European. Yes, I understand like that they have a, a bigger history, but you know the story is better told when it's when it's truly um, a one in a million scenario or yeah. one in a billion. So India's a billion. Yeah, how many people, how many actually, people? I think so. I'm, I'm not a, not 100 percent sure what the population is at the moment, but yeah, yeah I mean. So I, I would have gone with the one in a billion team uh, sort of storyline, and then I would have pushed the content, you know, the the appropriate way through. All of our channels to really make yeah. to really make it successful. Anyway, we we pick a whole bunch of people. You fast forward that you know they're winning, they're winning, they're winning. Yeah, they're, <laughs> so, they're, they're, these guys were just absolutely like crushing it. They yeah, were, they were dominating the scene, and you know, <laughs> we we were on top of the world when it came to you know looking at India, and we were like, all right, yeah, cool, let's see what else they can do. And you know, they were getting invited to play in different tournaments around Asia and potentially in Europe, and and they were getting invites to play for qualifiers for majors and minors, and we were like, all right. This looks like something special can happen, right? So yeah. We let we let it keep riding. So I went back to visit them twice at least, and you know, basically put them in a team house. We got them all their equipment. We got them all set up and geared out and optic stuff. We did up the entire place, and uh, we set them up with stream stuff as well, so they could start you know uh, engaging with the fan base, not just in India, but so the fans here in the U.S. can get to know them as well, which was you know an interesting thing because we put them in the Discord too, and. They started um, chatting with a lot of the Greenwall fans, which was, you know, a big deal because it's all about again, like you said, it's like a family, it's a unit. Like people yeah. need to know each other on a personal level, not just on a professional level, right? So, that that was really cool. But again, as time went on, you know, there were a lot of people who were very jealous, and they were saying stuff like, "Oh, you know, these guys have this European guy. They actually got us kicked out of one of the tournaments because we didn't have all Indian players." And you know, it was just kind of a constant struggle in trying to, you know, validate ourselves in India. Yeah. Um, but then as time went on, you know, uh, we ended up going to this tournament in China where, um, you know, I wouldn't like, to, I, I wouldn't say unfortunate. It's very upsetting, disappointing, and I think it's very selfish of that guy to do what he did. What um, guy was it? Uh, his name Forsaken? is Forsaken. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he's basically been shunned by the entire community. I'm pretty sure he's still in hiding in India. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I was so upset when I found out. I, I didn't even know what to do. The first thing I did was on the stage, I apologize to the other teams and organizations that were there. Yeah, okay, um, well, that, that we, 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 do, we skipped right? a little so. bit, we skipped the part. So, you know, when, when this all happened, I, I remember, like, when I started seeing the news, I was like, get the fuck out of here, I couldn't believe it. So yeah. immediately I texted you and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, no, right? I remember seeing that text. Yeah. And then, and then I, I, you know, you're like, dude, you know, it was, it was only him, the rest of the team didn't know, I, you know, I didn't know, you didn't have to, I, I knew that you didn't yeah. know, obviously, you know, yeah. I, I, I've known you. Uh, and, and you don't, you wouldn't, I don't, you're not the person, I'm a great judge of character, you would not be the person to do something <laughs> like that. So when, when that happened, I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, dude, why don't you do some research on this specific guy? Yeah. Because he's yeah. been accused of that shit before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I, I think you're like me, you give people the benefit of the doubt yeah. to, to our own fault. I, I think the whole way the story was aligned as well was that, you know, when the guys that we worked with that were finding these players as well, they they gave us the entire background on all of these players. So yeah. we did have a no, we had knowledge that he had been um, banned first of all in the past because of his, he had an account that he had bought that was sold or some something like that. He he sold an account that was banned and then bought another account. However, that works with Valve and Steam. They said, okay, look, we're going to give him a VAC ban for two years. Yeah. He fought against it, and he got back about six months later. And so, like, we all thought it was legit, right? Mm -hmm. And supposedly, it was just people just saying that he was cheating, and there was no proof, no evidence. I went and looked through stuff. We had other people look through it as well, and they were like, right, fine. Like, any tournament we play, there's always going to be an anti-cheat, and we had an anti-cheat at the LAN as well when we were doing the tryouts. And 
there was no sign of it. We had people watching him. We had people on not just on the computer watching him, but standing behind him watching him. And you know, there was no issues whatsoever. And as time went on, you know, we never saw anything. We checked PCs. We never found anything that was you know out of the ordinary. And it was very straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. So we kind of just you know went along with it, you know, with under the assumption that yeah, sure, he is an absolutely legitimate player, and he was doing his thing. And we had a manager that was living there as well, and he was taking care of everything, and he was looking after all this stuff. And and we never noticed it or found anything. The player sitting next to him trusted him as well. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it's all about being part of a team, right? If you don't have trust in your your teammate that's sitting right next to you, yeah, of course, you're not gonna do anything well, yeah, properly, the, right? So, I I do remember hearing that the two of them had objected to it or something. Two of the players that we had. Uh, no, actually, th so there, there was um, one player that we had in the past that we let go. He got a bit salty, and he put out a fake article anonymously um, saying that uh, he thought that that player was cheating and gave us an ultimatum saying that he wanted us to basically find out if he was doing anything. And he thinks one of the reasons he got let go was because of that. But he Wait, when was that article released? Uh, this was after the whole thing. Okay, after, this not was, before. Yeah, this was after okay, the whole thing. Okay, if it thing, was before, so. then I would have I taken no, his no, no, side no, right this now. This was after obviously. the whole thing, and he was just really salty about the whole thing because he got let go right before all these big tournaments yeah. happened and stuff like that. But to be very honest with you, he wasn't holding up his end of the bargain, and you know this is not a free ride for anybody, right? Of you got to put in your time. Yeah. You got to put in your work, and you got to show that you that you, you were supposed to be here. Yeah. And unfortunately, he wasn't doing that. Um, okay. So he, yeah. he, you go to the tournament, he, he ultimately gets caught on camera. On camera. Tell, tell yeah, me how that yeah. thing went down because it was, I, I wish so, they, they kept the camera on the guy the, the whole time. I, I wish they did too. They should fire the guy no. that took the the, 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 the the producer who took it off of that. <laughs> uh, the, the funny thing too is like if, he, if the camera stayed there, you would actually see me pulling Forsaken off of the PC because that's not there. And you know, for me, okay, let me just start from the beginning, right? What happened was prior to him, them wanting to check his PC, yeah. um, Marzil, fantastic player, great guy, um, was sitting right next to him, and he was uh, he was playing as well, right? And the, the round prior to that, and he, he basically slid forward, and he turned off his monitor by accident. So we're like, okay, fine, we need to do a t uh, t uh, technical pause. So we're like, fine, whatever. He uh, reset all of his settings on his uh, on his monitor, and at that time, you know, he was done, we're ready to go, we said go, and an admin walks out from behind the curtain. He just asked me, he's like, and I'm just sitting in the chair in the background. Yep. Um, I'm not a coach, obviously, right? So I just let them do their thing. Um, he comes back out and he's like, hey, I need to check uh, his PC. I said, yeah, sure, dude, do your thing, go for it. And he asks um, Forsaken to basically minimize his game. And when he minimizes his game, basically you see a command prompt that is up. And I couldn't see it from where I was sitting. And then next thing you know, I, like, I think you could see me swinging back around in the chair. And I look at the computer and I see this black mo this um, this black command prompt. And I'm like, okay, that's definitely not supposed to be there. And I get up and I see him. Uh, I don't know what the exact uh, key combination is. I think it's like Alt F4. And he closes it. And before he closes it, I see good luck, have fun at the bottom. And I'm just like, all right that's a bit fishy like yeah that, I don't know what the hell that is but we need to figure this out right now and you could see the admin fighting with him and I just immediately go like all right look I'm gonna help the admin because we need to do what's yeah. right yeah. right so I pull the player and I pull him back and the other guys just uh, Marzel's looking at him just shocked we're like dude what the fuck are you kidding me yeah and then it basically all hell breaks loose he deletes the actual program from the computer as well somehow I don't know how this guy has done it but there's like two, three keys that he can click, and it just deleted the file from the computer. So you would have, I mean, if you're him, you have to practice deleting that shit. You have yeah. to, like, yeah. as soon as you're done with your 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 daily scrim and practice, you have to practice how to delete this fucking program. That, exactly. So, yeah. uh, that I mean, is no so shady, There's no way anyone shady, knows bro. exactly how to do that. Yeah. Like, so I was just, I was livid at that point, and I was like, all so right. Just, just a quick update, guys. There's construction going on on the other side, and if, and if. That if they punch through this fucking wall and damage any of my, I'm actually gonna go to the other side right now and talk to them to make sure it's that. Anyway, sorry, go yeah. on. Um, um, anyway, the, the reason that I wanted to bring yeah. you on because the, the, a, a lot of publications and a lot of videos, they, you know, they sort of put the whole blame on on you. Yeah, they, uh, they, they condemned the other four players, which I think was completely unfair because mm -hmm. there was no knowledge of this. I mean, these are fantastic pro players from not just you know India. We had YB from Europe as well. And um, it was really unfortunate the way that the public treated us. I mean, we got death threats. People were trying to find out where we were landing, and they were just out to get us. And I think it was, it, it wasn't very fair. I, I get that there's a mob mentality online, these keyboard warriors and stuff like that. But you know, it's the way that we treat each other, right? It's all about this community and, and, and staying positive. And when shit goes down, I mean, 
you see who your true friends are and where the loyalty lies, right? And if everyone's just gonna be like, oh, everyone knew about it, he knew about it, they were all cheating, yada, 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 obviously, you know, no one's really, nobody, nobody gives a shit about you, you know, that, that's what you can tell. So um, they basically found the quick scapegoat. I think, um, you know, it was unfortunate that we had to let the other four players go, but uh, I made sure to stick around for a few more days and find them new teams to play for, and I vouched for them, and I basically told everybody that, hey, look, you know, these guys had nothing to do with it. They are completely innocent, and they're fantastic players, and you have to give them a chance, right? So I think I was able to get at least two or three of them onto a team before I left. And then I came back here, and um, I went back to Singapore at the time, and, and I think we basically shut down all of International, and that was basically it, yeah? So, uh, I, yeah, I don't, that's about the story. I okay, think, yeah. well, thank you. And uh, sorry that people treated you like that from the beginning without no, doing, you know. It's all good, man. I mean, shit happens, right? But look, you learn and you grow, and we're on to bigger and better things now, right? So, yeah, I'm very excited for the future, uh, looking around a couple teams and a couple organizations, and should be a good time. All right, man. Well, yeah. thank you for stopping by. Yeah. I appreciate you. Appreciate right. you, too. I'll get off my vlog. <laughs> thank you. Um, anyway, I, as, as I was... Ah, fuck. I'm so dumb. Kids, pay attention to what it is we do to the knife. Anyway, uh, I forgot to... Remember how I said at the beginning on the unboxing? Actually, you know what? I'm going to do these tomorrow. Um, I think that was a, a long enough vlog, and I think I'm going to end it right here. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, if you have any more questions about uh, you know, what happened in, in India CSGO, you can go back and, and read some of the publications that have been out there and then you know, sort of make your, your own assessment and adjustments uh, as you may. Uh, anyway, thank you for tuning in, everybody. I apologize for the vlog not being as exciting as it usually is. Uh, but you know what? Back in the office, super excited to be doing what it is that I'm doing on a daily basis. Um, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. I don't want to continue to record with these people in the background. Maybe I'll show you guys. Actually, you know what? Let's go show you guys. I guess you couldn't really see it. Anyway, now having said that, and with that said, I'm see you guys tomorrow as usual. And as usual. Same. Damn.